starting off our list at number 10 is Jake Gyllenhaal. Most of his fan base came after his incredible performance in Donnie Darko, which came out in 2000. It seems to be the leading role as Donnie Darko made him a household name, even though he had acted before that movie. He had a great performance in October Sky, where his role got him an Independent Spirit Award nomination. But his acting resume goes back even farther than those early flicks. When he was just 11 years old, he played Danny Robbins in 1991 City Slickers. From there, he also booked parts in A Dangerous Woman and Josh and Sam. He might have been more known as a child star if his parents allowed him to take a big role. In an interview with The Guardian, he said he landed a big role in the 1992 The Mighty Ducks, but his parents didn't allow him to take it because it required him to be out of town for two months. Nonetheless, he was still a successful actor at a very young age, we just didn't know it. In at number 9, we have Scarlett Johansson. We know her now to play the seductress or love interest on screen, or as the superhero Black Widow in multiple Marvel movies. Because of the superhero role, she has been known for being paid equally to the majority of her male cast members. But before all her success, she was just a regular kid trying to catch a break. She first booked a role in the 1994 movie North, which also starred Elijah Wood. It was her first acting job and she was only 9 years old. After that, she booked a role in the thriller Just Cause that came out in 1995 and then continued working on the pilot of the show The Client in the same year. Ever since then, she's been able to book at least two big projects a year. Who knew her acting resume started when she was just 9 years old? Sliding into number 8, we have Christian Bale. After watching him in American Psycho in 2000, many people believed they were seeing a star in the making, but his star had been burning for years by that point in his career. In 1987, at the young age of 13, he captivated audiences with his performance in Steven Spielberg's Empire of the Sun. His work was so impressive that the National Board of Review of Motion Pictures gave him the first award for best performance by a juvenile actor. As he went through his teen years in the acting industry, you might remember him appearing in films such as Newsies and Little Woman. Most will agree that his role as Patrick Bateman in American Psycho is mostly remembered as the start of his career, but he had years of work before that role, all beginning at the age of 13 years old. At number 7 we have Kirsten Dunst, the bubbly actress who's mostly known for her roles in Fargo, Spider-Man and Bring It On. But she's actually been in the spotlight long before these movies came out. Most people forget or don't realize that she is the young Judy in the iconic movie Jumanji that came out in 1995 and starred the legendary Robin Williams. Apparently Scarlett Johansson was also up for the role, but Kirsten ended up being the one to take the role. She was just 11 years old and the critics say she held her own standing next to the comedy legend Robin Williams. Even a year before this movie, she booked a role in Interview with the Vampire where she got to work with Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise. That's the movie she had her first on screen kiss which happened to be with Brad Pitt. She told Bullet Magazine that everyone at the time was like, you're so lucky you kissed Brad Pitt, but she thought it was disgusting. Well, I was probably kissing my Barbie dolls at that time, so count your blessings. Taking our number 6 spot is Joaquin Phoenix. To be fair, we wouldn't know he was a child star unless we knew that he didn't use the name Joaquin when he first started his career. Not only that, but his older brother River Phoenix was an enormous star in Teen Idol that kind of overshadowed any work that he did as a kid. So you might be wondering what name he went by when he was a child star? Well, he went by the self-given name Leaf. He landed his first role on Seven Brides for Seven Brothers alongside his brother and then went on to appear in a number of popular TV shows and films such as Hill Street Blues, Murder, She Wrote, and Parenthood. His acting resume as a kid is rather impressive if you check it out on IMDb. After his last childhood film, he moved to Mexico, took a break from the biz, and returned to acting as Joaquin, and the rest is history. Halfway through our list at spot number 5 is Amanda Seyfried. You might know the beautiful blonde actress for movies like Mean Girls, Dear John, or Mamma Mia, but her career started long before she appeared in any of these movies. Most people will say that Mean Girls is where her acting career first started when she took on the hilarious role as Karen back in 2004. I actually knew her from the TV show Veronica Mars, so if you're a fan of that show, you might have recognized her as the dead friend Lily Kane. How 
However, she actually booked her first major role at the age of 15 on the show As the World Returns. After that, she appeared on another popular soap show, All My Children. She had a successful resume even before she auditioned for Mean Girls, although I think it's almost impossible not to remember her as Karen, the girl who can tell the weather with her boobs. Coming into number four, we have Ryan Reynolds, who is one of the biggest actors in the industry these days. His fans often look back to his early work and think of his work on TV in Two Guys, A Girl, and a Pizza Place, or to his film National Lampoon's Van Wilder. His career actually goes back further than that, all the way back to 1991. He starred in the Canadian team drama series called Hillside, which is known as 15 in the US. He was casted at the age of 14 years old as he took on the lead as Billy Simpson. He was earning about $150 an episode, which Ryan says made him feel like a gajillionaire. After that, he went on to appear in Ordinary Magic, My Name is Kate, and The Odyssey. This would seem to be a dream job for most kids in his early teens, but Reynolds says he hated it then. In an interview on Live with Kelly and Michael, he said, I just did it to kind of get out of the house. After that, I ended up working at a warehouse and a restaurant for two years. But turns out he couldn't help but make his way back to the industry where his career continued to take off thanks to his impressive resume as a kid. At number three, we have Jessica Alba. Although she may be distancing herself from Hollywood these days, she is still a household name for many movie fans. She blew up as a teenager in 2000 with her role in the TV show Dark Angel, but she had actually been in the industry for years before that show. As a kid, she landed her first film role in 1994 in the movie Camp Nowhere, and then booked a reoccurring role on The Secret World of Alex Mack. Around the same time, she also started shooting the new Adventures of Flipper, where she played Maya Grant. She said she acted in the series from age 12 to 15, but as she matured, her good looks began to gain more and more attention. In an interview with Men's Magazine, she said she struggled to convince movie makers to get past her hotness and consider her for more substantial work. Unfortunately, she really is only known to play the hottie wearing a bikini. I'm sure there are a lot of girls who would trade places with her though if she's really that upset about it. Alright guys, at number 2 we have Jason Bateman. We are all very familiar with his more recent work like Horrible Bosses and the Ozark series, but his journey in Hollywood began a long time ago. Back in 1982, Bateman booked a role as James Cooper, the young kid in Little House on the Prairie. After that, he took on a role in the TV series Silver Spoons, which led him to starring in It's Your Move and The Hogan Family. His role as David Hogan pushed him into the teen icon status, which only heightened even more when he starred in Teen Wolf 2. The 80s were a good time for his career as a kid, and the rest took off from there. Taking our number one one spot is Ryan Gosling, the Hollywood heartthrob known for his movies such as La La Land, Crazy Stupid Love, and The Notebook, of course. But what you might not know is that his career started when he was just a little nugget. He starred alongside Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears in Disney Channel's The Mickey Mouse Club, which is such a big deal for normal people like us. At age 12, he received a two-year contract in 1993 to become an official member of The Mickey Mouse Club, so the Canadian actor packed up and moved to Florida. Fun fact, while filming he became really close to Justin Timberlake that Justin's mom became Gosling's legal guardian during that time. After his contract ended, he went on to book roles in Are You Afraid of the Dark and the Goosebumps TV series. His career went on from there as he continued to book impressive roles, leading him to the actor we know him as today. Kicking off our countdown at number 10 is Taylor Mumpson. If you don't know who I'm talking about, she was Cindy Lou Who from The Grinch. The adorable little blonde who won over our hearts singing Where Are You Christmas at just 7 years old. She was far too cute not to be recognized as a child star. And then in her teens she became known for her role as Jenny on the Gossip Girl series. Overall she's kept a very clean cut and innocent look, which is why you would never recognize her nowadays. In 2009 she completely changed her image when she became the lead singer of the band called The Pretty Reckless. Cindy Lou Who is now 26 years old and continues to kill it with the rock band being their leading lady. Next. Up at number 9 is Haley Joel Osment, also known as the kid from The Sixth Sense. It's been over 20 years since the movie first scared its audiences all across the globe. The movie was iconic. And we'd be lying if we said a big part of that wasn't the young actor's performance. He was just 11 years old when he was cast to play Cole Spear, leaving us with the infamous phrase, I see dead people. Years after he delivered the iconic line, he continued to pursue his acting career with credits like Pay It Forward and The Country Bears. Overall, his acting career didn't quite land as many iconic lines as before, but he has been able to keep his own. 
The now 31 year old is still booking roles wherever he can. His last one was in 2019 on the TV series The Kaminsky Method. Swiping so the number eight spot is Davy Chase. She's the actress who portrayed the scary girl from The Ring, Samara Morgan. The iconic horror movie blessed our screens back in 2002, and her character has gone on to be a classic Halloween costume or even a good old prank. The child star found her way into the spotlight with this movie, and it even won her the Best Villain Award at the 2003 MTV Movie Awards. She's always pursued an acting career, appearing on shows like HBO's Big Love. She also voiced Lilo in the 2002 Disney's movie Lilo and Stitch. She's now 29 years old and hasn't appeared in anything since 2018, but she does keep a pretty consistent following on her social media pages. So if you want to creep her, go creep, because that's it. She looks a lot different. In spot number 7 is Bug Hall. The child star hit the jackpot in 1994 when he was cast in his first ever feature film The Little Rascals. The 9 year old at the time took on the iconic role of Alfalfa. After he brought the love struck boy to life, he went on to star in other 90 films like The Big Green, The Stupids and Honey We Shrunk the Kids. As he got older, he still continued to have a career making guest appearances on shows like The OC, 90210 and Criminal Minds. His real name isn't Bug though, it is actually Brandon, but he goes by Bug. In more recent years, he doesn't have too many credits to his name. He's now 34 years old, and I know what you ladies might be wondering. And yes, at the time of this recording, he is single. Might be ready to mingle. Moving along to number six, we have Abigail Breslin. Some people would have first seen her in the 2002 horror movie Signs, but it wasn't until 2006 that she actually made a real name for herself. The 10 year old actress at the time got her first feature film when she took on the lead role in Little Miss Sunshine. She was nominated for an Oscar for her performance. Since then, she has remained relevant in the industry and has built a successful career for herself. She appeared in a variety of movies like New Year's Eve and Zombieland Double Tap, and could also be seen in the TV series Scream Queens. She's still pretty young, she is only 23 years old, so she has a long career ahead of her. Halfway through at number 5 is Jonathan Lipnicki. It was back in 1996 when the spiky haired cutie totally upstaged Tom Cruise and Renee Zellweger in the movie Jerry Maguire. He was only 6 years old when he took on the role and from there his career took off from that moment on. He took on lead roles in Stuart Little, Like Mike, Dr. Doolittle and many more. But in more recent years he's opened up about the anxiety and bullying that he faced when he was a young star. He said that he was always called a has-been and he was told that he wouldn't book future roles. However, he was able to and he continued to live out his dreams of being an actor. He's currently 29 years old and clearly likes to work out on his free time. That is what I have gathered from this research. Oh, and he's single. Kate's are wondering. We're here now at number four, and we have Barrett Oliver. Back in the 1980s, he was a very popular child star, mostly known for his role in the legendary movie, The Never Ending Story. One would think that his acting career would only go up from there, and it might have, but he decided to walk away from it all when he was just 16 years old. He ended up finding an interest in photography, so he ended up going to college to study it. He studied under an artist named Steven Berkman and two master photographers who introduced him to the unique 19th century technique of wet plate photography. From there, he created his own unique style and has spent the last decade giving lectures and hosting his own workshops around the country to promote his craft. Not only is he a photography teacher though, he also is an author. He published a book called A History of the Woodbury Type. Honestly, he probably has the most drastic change on this list if we're talking about just appearances. Like I would never recognize him. Not a chance. In our third spot is Haley Mathers. All right, so this one is an exception because she's technically not a child star. The only reason she's even famous is because Eminem is her dad. However, everyone knew who she was because he was always rapping about her in his lyrics, which also turned into music videos. Back in the 90s, when he was still known as Slim Shady, he released the infamous song Haley's Song. She was only six years old when the song was released in 2002. You would probably never recognize her now. She is now 24 years old and is known as an instant. Instagram influencer. She is known as Haley Jade Scott online and has a whopping 1.8 million followers on Instagram at the time of this recording. When you look at her, I can totally tell she's related to Eminem, like you can see the resemblance. It's actually kind of weird to see her all grown up like this. Not gonna lie. She's beautiful though. Stealing the number two spot is Edward Furlong. Anyone who watched the Terminator film series would have recognized him as John Connor in Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Things are going pretty good after his breakout role. He went on to star in a handful of blockbuster movies throughout the 90s like American Heart, Pecker, and American History X. 
sex. But his career started to dry up when he started struggling with an addiction to drugs. Throughout the years, he's had a lot of legal battles for drug related offenses. He has been open to media about it though, explaining he was hooked on heroin and cocaine, which has played a huge factor in his drastic appearance change. Good news is, in 2019, he made his return in the newest movie of the series, Terminator Dark Fate. So despite his appearance changes, he did make a comeback in this industry. Starting off our list at number 10 is Danny Lloyd. For decades, people have been wondering whatever happened to the kid from the iconic horror movie The Shining. Like legit, horror fans have actually asked the author, Stephen King, where the kid went. Turns out he left the Hollywood glitz and glam to become a pig farmer and a science teacher. No, this is not a joke. Danny was only five years old at the time when he took on the role as Danny Torrance in the 1980 classic and reached fame almost instantly. But he didn't seem to want it. He is now in his 40s and is happily married with six children. In 2013, he did his first interview since he was a kid with Daily News, where he opened up about his now normal life. He said that people don't recognize him when he goes out in public, and he loves that. He explained that he did continue acting after The Shining, but ended up giving up when he was a teenager because it was just too difficult. He said, We kept trying for several years until I was in high school, and I stopped at about 14 with almost no success. Danny says he enjoyed being in the movie, but went on to work at a local Walmart after, and and then drove a tractor on a hawk farm. Now he is teaching biology at a community college outside of Louisville. Fans were hoping to see him reprise his role for the upcoming sequel, Doctor Sleep, but sadly he is sitting this one out. Coming into number nine is Mara Wilson. She is best remembered for playing Matilda in the 1996 film titled after her character. Kids were quick to fall in love with her character and the magical powers that came with it. In fact, we are still talking about Matilda to this day. Earlier this year, there was a trending game called the Matilda Challenge, which had people making videos of them dancing around the room and pretending to make objects move. Just like her iconic scene from the movie, which I totally love. But regardless of how fun her character was, Marla would disagree, which is why she quit the business just a few years after the movie brought her fame. In one of her blogs in 2012, she wrote, Here is something no real celebrity will ever tell you. Film acting is not very fun. Well then. After leaving Hollywood, she went on to live a normal life and found a passion for writing. In 2013, she was asked if she would return to acting and her response was, No, I don't think so. I do act sometimes in friends projects, but when I do, it's just for fun. It is actually a hobby for me now. We haven't seen her on the big screen in a long time, but she continues to work on screenplays and novels. Swiping the number eight spot is Shirley Temple. She began acting at the young age of three and became Hollywood's biggest box office child star in the 30s. I mean, who hasn't heard of Shirley Temple? I'm pretty sure we were all sick of her song, Animal Crackers in My Soup, after singing it every time that we had a bowl of soup as a kid. Or maybe that was just me. By the time she was 12, she starred in 43 movies and tons of commercials. But by the time she was 22 years old, she decided she wanted to retire from acting. She ended up changing her career path entirely and ran for Congress in 1967. She lost, but then two years later, she was appointed to represent the US at the United Nations. She then became the US ambassador to Ghana from 1974 to 1976. Who would have thought the animal cracker girl would end up in politics? Sadly, she did pass away in 2014 at the age of 85, but her memory lives on forever. In Hollywood and in politics, politics. Talk about a life full of achievements there. At number seven is Jeff Cohen. The child star was famously known for his role as Chunk in The Goonies, which is one hell of a classic movie. The movie came out in 1985 and he continued his acting career up until 1991. So if you do the math, that is a total of six years. Not very long. He's been asked on numerous occasions why he left the industry. He cracks jokes saying that puberty forced him into early retirement as a child actor. He explains that as he got older, finding work was a lot more difficult. The roles were different and the competition in increased as he got more involved in the industry. But once acting was out of the picture, he found a passion for law and attended the University of California, Berkeley, earning a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. He had no problem leaving the world of Hollywood behind. He ended up becoming a lawyer, and in 2008, he was named one of the top 35 executives under 35 years of age. So he's a successful one at that. He says that acting has benefited his legal career because it makes him more empathetic for his clients and less academic. Basically meaning that he can show more emotion. I feel that. Here we are at number six with Kay Panabaker. She made her on screen debut when she was 12 years old. She first became popular after taking on the role as Nikki in the Summerland TV series and then later on as Jenny in the 2009 Fame movie remake. She also starred alongside her sister Danielle Panabaker for a few Disney Channel shows and movies. But throughout her time filming, she was also going through school and trying to do advanced courses. She actually graduated from high school at the age of 13. So she was one smart little cookie, which might be why she decided to leave 
her acting career and go to school full time. She ended up going to the UCLA and studied zoology. From there, she got her dream job as an animal keeper at Disney's Animal Kingdom. The now 29 year old has said that she doesn't regret her decision and loves what she's doing now. I mean, that's a pretty sweet gig. Halfway through the list at number five is Peter Ostrom. You might remember him as Charlie Bucket from the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory movie back in 1971. He was only 12 years old when he got selected to play the role, and although he enjoyed working on it, he decided not to sign a three film contract once the movie was over. He returned home after filming the movie and just never felt the desire to go back and continue to pursue his acting career. He says being at home sparked an interest in horses, and he wanted to become a veterinarian one day instead. He ended up going to Cornell University College of Veterinary Medicine in 1984 to receive his certificate. Later on in 2005, he moved to New York with his wife and two children, and as of 2018, he works out of the countryside veterinarian clinic. As for acting, he says that he wanted to live a normal life and had declined reporters and interviews for a very long period of time. He explained, saying, I wanted people to judge me on who I was, not what I'd done. He even said that sometimes in his childhood, he lied and told people that it was his brother in the movie, not him. I wonder how many people actually fell for that and believed him. Next up at number four is Ariana Richard. She will forever be remembered for her role as Lex Murphy in the 1993 Jurassic Park. She was only 14 years old when she booked the role. She just so happened to be one of the grandchildren of Jurassic Park's creator. Talk about having some connections. She actually started her acting career six years before Jurassic Park, but it was the one role that put her name on the map. Basically, it was her big break. After that, she appeared in multiple movies and also had a cameo appearance in The Lost World Jurassic Park. But she decided that her last on screen appearance would be in 2001 as she sparked a new interest for painting. She went on to graduate from Skidmore College and she now runs her own art gallery. The artist is now 40 years old and is married to Mark Bolton, who she shares a daughter with. Coming into our number three spot is Jake Lloyd. The child star had a good career going after starring in four episodes of ER back in 1996, but his breakthrough role was playing Anakin Skywalker in the 1999 Star Wars The Phantom Menace. The eight year old had some big shoes to fill at such a young age because we all know how crazy and passionate Star Wars fans are. He had to play this sweet innocent kid but also show a dark side that would be convincing enough for him to grow up to become Darth Vader. After his first Star Wars appearance, he reprised his role as Anakin's voice for five video games, but Jake stopped his acting career by the time he was 12 years old. His life took a turn down a dark path and he was arrested in 2015 for reckless driving after a high speed car chase. He was charged with reckless driving, failure to stop, resisting arrest, and driving without a license. In 2000. 2016, TMZ reported that he was transferred from jail to a psychiatric facility after a diagnosis of schizophrenia. When speaking with the Daily Telegraph, he spoke about his Star Wars days, saying that kids bullied him at school because of it, so he ended up destroying any memories he actually had from the filming experience. This one wasn't really a happy ending. In spot number two is Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen. Twins are a two for one deal, so they are taking one spot on this list. The twins were infants when they stole hearts playing Michelle Tanner on the hit TV series Full House back in 1987. They were nine years old when they series ended, so basically their entire childhood from birth was on a film set. From there, they started their own brand simply by being the Olsen twins, where they made a collection of Mary Kay and Ashley movies. I have all of them on DVD. They also had their own TV shows called So Little Time and Two of a Kind, but their last on-screen performance together was back in 2004, where they did their first theatrical release movie, a New York Minute. These two were wildly famous. They were actually billionaires by the time that they were teenagers, owning their own clothing line on top of of all their film success. But they didn't want that to last forever. They announced in 2012 that they officially retired from acting and now focus on their fashion line called Elizabeth and James. They still remain in the public eye to an extent in the fashion world, but they keep their life very low key. We barely hear or see anything about them anymore. Taking the number one place on our list is Macaulay Culkin. Every kid in the world knows him as the kid from Home Alone. He will always hold a place in our hearts for playing Kevin McAllister in those classic Christmas movies. And although he's mainly known for that series, he also appeared in eight other features Feature films between the years 1990 to 1994. The kid was a huge star. He went on to make a guest appearance on the NBC sitcom Will and & Grace and start in the movie Party Monster. Many would say his acting career was solid from there on out, but then, which felt like kind of out of nowhere, he quit acting. He wanted to live a normal life and ended up moving to Paris where he spends most of his time writing, painting, and working on a podcast called Bunny Ears with his friend Matt Cohen. After going MIA for many years, he has now made his way back into the limelight to share his story, but he hasn't really came for all the fame part of it. He's actually thrilled when people don't recognize him or bring up the Home Alone movies. He told The Blast, I was going to Paris for a little while and I thought people didn't recognize me. But then it was like, no, we recognize you, we just don't care. And I was like, where have you been?
been my whole life. I think we're so used to seeing celebrities in the spotlight that it's hard to believe that some don't actually enjoy it.